In this video, I'm going to cover using variables that are affected by the press of a button, as well as displaying the variable value in a text field that will be on the screen, um, or on the stage, excuse me, that will update, as well as animating a health bar. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is uh, point out the way this file is set up. It just has three layers um, and two frames. The first frame has, um, it says click the button to reduce your health, and then health bar, and I'm going to put a health bar here, and the second frame just says you killed yourself. So essentially what's going to happen is you're going to click this button, and um, when you click it too many times, you're going to go to the you killed yourself button. This button is going to reduce your health by some amount each time you click it. So I want to go ahead and start labeling my frames. Since I am going to have um, the code go to this frame, instead of using go to and stop uh, to, it's easier to go ahead and label the frame. So if I add more frames in later, I can um, still reference it without having to change my code. So I'm just going to call this frame dead. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first frame, and in the actions layer, I am going to create new variables. One is going to be called health, so I say var health, and I'm just going to make it a number um, equal to 100. Now you could make it a uint because it's not going to be, um, we don't really need it to be negative or any fraction amount, but I'm just going to go ahead and just use number. Okay, Then I'm going to do var health percent number equals 1. So this health is going to be the character, well, whatever's health is being reduced. And this health percent is going to allow me to update my health bar, because the health bar, the way I'm going to affect its size, is going to be based on a percentage. Okay, So by setting it equal to 1, one the decimal value 1 is the same thing as 100%. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this button. Uh, let's give it an instance name of death button. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my actions frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an event listener to this button. So I want it to be an, a mouse event. I want it to be clicked. So I'm going to say death button because that's what I called that instance. Add event listener. And I want it to be a mouse event. When I click it, and I'm going to run the function that I'm just going to call death down, or health down, excuse me. Okay. So now I need to go ahead and um, define this function that I said is going to run whenever you click this button. So this says the health button, whenever you click it with the mouse, we're going to run the function health down. So I'm going to create a function called health down, and it's going to be an event, mouse event. Oops. Okay. So what I want to happen is whenever this button is pressed, I want my health to be reduced by 10. So the health was the value here that I set equal to 100. I want it to equal health minus 10 whenever the button's pressed. Okay. Now you can also do this health minus equals 10, but oh, and then semicolon. I prefer to do it this way in this instance though because then I can see that the health is being reduced. The new health value is the old health value minus 10. It's just easier to see the syntax on it. I'm also going to use the trace function so that in the output um, screen here it will actually output what the health is supposed to be. So, because right now I don't have anything on the stage that's going to tell me what the health is. So this is, this trace uh, function is just to make sure that it's working. Okay. So I also want to update my health percent. So I am going to say health percent equals health divided by 100 and I'll go ahead and trace. 
my um, health percent value as well. Okay, so whatever this is, this should be a decimal. So if it's like 90, this should be 0.9. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it um, just to see if it's working. And it's not because I forgot to put stop at the very top. Okay. So you can see 90.9, 80.8. Now there's some issues with it because you'll see that it can go down below zero. I don't want that to happen. So we will cap that off in a minute. Okay. So now what I want to do is go ahead and add my health bar. So I'm going to do that by using the rectangle function here. I'm going to make the outline be black and I'm going to make the coloring be like this green here. Make sure that um, object drawing mode is off, uh, meaning merge drawing mode is on. So right now because this isn't highlighted, okay, it is off. So I'm going to draw a little health bar here. Now what I'm going to do is only select the fill. The point in making sure that it was in merge drawing mode was that now the fill and the outline are two separate pieces. Okay, So I'm going to select the fill and I'm going to convert it to a symbol by right clicking and doing convert to symbol. Now I'm going to name this symbol whatever health bar, it doesn't really matter, let me capitalize it doesn't really matter too much what you name your symbols. You don't have to really worry about making them two words or anything because the symbol name um, will not be referenced in your code so it doesn't have to follow any um, particular naming convention. And I want to make sure that the registration point is right here. That's going to be really important when I am making it scale. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function later that's going to scale this health bar and wherever my registration point is, is going to tell it in which direction to scale. So I want it to scale here so that this will be the direction that it goes. It goes in this direction when it scales. I'm going to pause for just a moment and I'll be right back. So now I have this health bar is an instance of this symbol health bar. You can see that it says I have one on the stage. But if I want to reference this in the code, I need to give it an instance name. So I'm going to give this instance the name bar. So what I want to happen is the size of this health bar to be the same as my health percent that I defined here in the first frame. Okay. So I am going to say that bar scale x is equal to health percent. Okay, so when I run this, you can see that it now rescales. Now if you had not set that registration point to here, it would, and you left it in the middle, it would scale kind of like inward. If you put it over here, it would scale in this direction. Okay, so it's important that you correctly put the scale. Now you can see a problem here because we are allowing it to go to below zero. Our health bar can also go in a direction that we don't really want it to go in. So another thing I want to do is add a little text here that tells you how much your health your health is. Okay, so um, you know usually you don't see a health as a percentage you see it as an actual value, which is why we have the value here for health. So I'm going to have a little text box right here um, that displays your health. So I'm going to start creating a text. Okay. Now you want to make sure that it says classic text and then dynamic text. Okay. Um, static text means it can't change, dynamic means it can change. And you know, pick whatever font and size you want. I'm going to make the color black because that green is pretty hideous. Okay. And I'm just going to put it right here. I'm going to make it right align. And I'm going to go ahead and just type 100 in there for now. And I'm going to just rescale it. It doesn't really matter too much right now. But I'm going to rescale it, line it up where I want it to be. Okay. So what I need to do to make this dynamic is I need to first make sure that this font 
is embedded within um, my file. Okay, so you have to select embedded, and you have to make sure that you select all. And you can name it whatever you want; it doesn't matter. You can add extra fonts by selecting the um, plus sign here. I usually just do a new one for each. Um, um, excuse me, for each text I do. The really important thing is to make sure you have all selected. If you don't have all selected, only certain values will be able to display in this little box with your um, with your code. Now in this case we're only really going to be using numerical values so if you want you could just use numerals here but um, if you decided to use this font other places in your game um, that would allow it to put more values like letters and spaces and stuff you would want it to be all. In this case we could just leave it as numerals but I'm just gonna do all because that just takes any value that I could possibly think of can be displayed in here. So then I say OK and notice now that there is a font in my library Okay, and it was font one we could have named it whatever we wanted it doesn't really matter all right so now I have this font embedded which means I can actually start displaying text here so the way I can do that is I need to give this box here an instance name so I'm going to give it the instance name make sure you only have that selected I'm gonna give it the instance name health text the only way that you can reference any specific thing on the stage in your code is if you give it an instance name. Remember we gave this an instance name, this an instance name, and this an instance name. So what I'm going to do is I called it health text. So I am going to make health text display whatever my health is. Okay. So I'm going to say health text dot text is equal to string health. So what I've done here is I've said this little box called health text, the text within it is going to need to display the value of health. Now because the value of health is a number and not an actual um, string, I need to first convert it to a string then I can display it in text. Alright, so let's see what happens. Now you can see these. this gets smaller, that updates, and we still have our negative problem. Okay, now you can fix that negative problem in a few different ways. You could have, um, you know, made sure health could never get negative by making it uh, uint, okay, which is a um, positive integer. But what I want to do is I want it to whenever the value gets below zero I want it to go to my death screen. So I'm going to add a new function and I'm going to go ahead and add an event listener to the stage. So I'm adding this event listener to the stage because I want it to always look for this regardless of if a button's being pressed or not. So the let me learn how to spell here. Okay. So event and I'm going to put enter frame because I want it to always be checking for this and I'm going to just call it monitor HP. Okay, so stage, add event listener, monitor HP. So always check for this monitor HP function. So if I do function monitor HP an event, event, oops, not capitalized in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the health gets to zero or less, then I need to go to that frame that said dead. Okay, so if health is less than or equal to zero, go to and stop dead. Remember we called that frame dead earlier.
So make sure that your her, um, parentheses, or I'm sorry, your braces are lined up, and they should be as long as you press enter right afterwards. It should line everything up for you. So I think that's all I need to do. Let's go ahead and try it. You killed yourself. Okay, so once it gets to zero, it automatically takes you to the next screen. Now, there are other things that you would have to do to make sure that, you know, it um, can't go above 100, and you know, there are um, other things that you might need to do for something more complicated. This is just a simple explanation of how to display a text on a screen that updates with a variable, as well as make a health bar.